Hi everybody and welcome to this week's episode of our international SEO series. Today we're joined by Justin um, who is an in-house SEO manager and he is also from South Africa. So he's going to be talking to us about the nuances of the South African market and teaching us what we need to do. So Justin, thank you very much for joining us and I'll hand it over to you. Awesome, thank you so much uh, for having me. I uh, had a lot of fun putting this together and um, yeah, I really hope there's some uh, insights here that um, sort of yeah uncover the uh, South African market when it comes to SEO so um, yeah we can get started. Perfect. I'm sure it's going to be great because I know that lots of people kind of when it comes to international SEO kind of think you know Germany, Spanish, everything. Um, South Africa is not one that you hear that much. No not at all and um, funny enough I was um, listening to a podcast earlier today um, and I think Someone was mentioning a bunch of um, English languages or countries, I, I guess, where English is spoken. And of course, they, they do the States, um, Australia, Canada, all of those. But uh, for some reason, always uh, forget South Africa. Um, so, um, yeah, hopefully this, uh, <laughs> I guess, um, puts us a bit more in the, in the spotlight, so to speak. Cool. So, um, yeah, I'm Justin. <laughs> I'm an SEO specialist from, from South Africa. Um, I've got about, about six years experience. Although I'm currently based in the Netherlands, I have um, yeah had my own small micro agency in South Africa. I um, yeah worked with various clients in in various industries within the country. Um, yeah, and I was able to to help them with um, their SEO strategies and and sort of implement everything from start to finish. Yeah, so I think that gives me uh, a relatively good understanding of the very complex um, and nuanced um, market that is South Africa. Um, yeah, so we can we can definitely jump um, right into to the good stuff now that uh, you know who I am. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, so some of the topics um, yeah I'll be covering today are just some of the top digital channels within South Africa, the very specific search behavior that um, yeah South Africans tend to have. We'll also be looking at um, multilingual SEO in South Africa. Um, Another one that's that's very important and that a lot of international companies seem to to forget is um, yeah, what considerations need to be sort of um, thought about before entering the market. Um, it's not as easy as sort of just opening up shop. Yeah, we'll also look at the the buyer culture and then I'll just provide some SEO tips, you know, specifically for the South African market. And we'll look at micro localization, which in a way kind of ties into the multilingual SEO in South Africa. but um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that at the end. So let's um, head right into the first slide. So when we're looking at the top digital um, channels in South Africa, Google.com and Google.co.za um, dominate the, the market. Um, pretty much everyone opens up their, their device and uh, heads straight to, to one of those. Um, the other sort of search engines like Bing and um, DuckDuckGo and Yandex, even to a, a very lesser extent, uh, I guess, make up the rest of that percentage. But Google definitely um, dominates the market. What's interesting is that I guess back in the mid to, to late 90s, maybe even in the early 2000s, um, we did have our own sort of um, search engine, which was called Um And that actually went um, quite far in terms of the search engine um, battle, I guess, uh, at that point, you know, everyone was trying to kind of uh, um, make their mark in in, uh, in that space. So, you know, we had obviously Google and then we had Yahoo. And I think even then there was Ask Jeeves, which I haven't actually thought about in, in years. I remember that one. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I feel old now. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, um, yeah, so Anansi and and even Ask Jeeves for uh, for that matter were um, were kind of popular in, in South Africa. But yeah, those have have really disappeared almost uh, to nothing. So I think now anansi.co.za, it might be .com. I, I probably should have checked before this, but um, yeah, I think it's now like a, a business directory. I, I don't even think it's a search engine at all. So um, yeah, very um, interesting that we, you know, we don't take on um, our own kind of search engine or, or anything like that. So we, we kind of aligned with, I guess, the rest of the world in terms of, um, yeah, having Google dominate our, our market. But when it comes to, easier. yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, I, I can't remember the last time I even, um, yeah, saw Yahoo search, uh, embarrassing as that may be as an SEO specialist. I, um, 
the the businesses that I've worked with um, all tend to focus on on Google. So those, you know, even Bing is is um, a tiny tiny percentage of of the South African market. Um, and there are certainly instances where I would say, you know, it is important to optimize for for Bing, especially because um, a lot of older people in South Africa they'll open up their computer and the first thing, you know, it's not um, um, Internet Explorer anymore, but you know, it's um, you know the first thing that they'll open up and um, basically go to Bing as if and act as if it were Google. So um, it's still something that um, yeah, I, I, you know, I would suggest depending on on what you're doing, but certainly Google is the the dominant force. But interestingly enough, um, social media platforms in South Africa are used, you know, not just for um, connecting socially, of course, but you know, people do a lot of brand research and um, a lot of um, advertising is actually done on on these platforms as well. So you'll find a lot of businesses um, will ignore Google ads and, um, you know, head straight to Meta and um, set up campaigns there. So it's, it's um, yeah, a fairly big part of, I think, the um, digital makeup of South Africa. And then, of course, um, I think video is becoming yeah popular, not only in South Africa, but I think um, around the world. And I think it's a, a channel that, yeah, gaining um, a lot of popularity, especially in, in South Africa. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, demographic differences within the country, but, you know, on, on, on the whole, I think everyone, relatively speaking, is um, a fairly mature audience when it comes to, um, you know, searching online. And um, um, But there's definitely a lot, a lot more potential for companies to, um, you know, sort of dive into their SEO strategies and um, take it on um, a little bit more seriously, if I can put it that way. I don't think a lot of companies um, look at SEO as being something that should be integral into their digital marketing strategy. So it's yeah, just sort of something interesting to to note. Yeah, I think I, it would be really good if everyone was like, yes, SEO is the best. Let's do SEO everywhere. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll get there, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I think um, there's still a lot of um, convincing, you know, trying to sort of convince um, businesses uh, especially small businesses um local businesses it's uh, it's really hard um to convince them that you know this is kind of where their their money should go it's um and and i do understand you know it's not a traditional marketing um channel so uh, a lot of business owners i guess who are yeah not not so um clued up on on seo uh, it takes a bit more work to to sort of get them convinced but um yeah once you do they they tend to be quite thrilled and, and almost um, amazed at how um, such small changes to to their website and such small optimizations can make such a massive difference. This is sort of just a um, breakdown that um, yeah just reinforces the the point that I was making um, in the previous slide. You can see um, yeah Google basically dominates um, yeah the the market and um, the rest of them being second place I suppose, but. <laughs> Uh, not by much, and then everything else, yeah, very, very small. Well, that's good for us SEOs that we don't need to worry about different ranking factors if we're going into South Africa. Yeah, exactly. It's um, as if uh, you know there weren't enough ranking factors for us to to consider. Yeah, you know, in the beginning, it's uh, it's just one of those those things. Um, yeah, we can sort of um, tend to later, if I can put it that way. Um, focus on Google and then, um, yeah, the rest of, the, you know, the small percentage, um, yeah, we can target that at a later stage is, is generally the, the way I um, yeah, like to, <laughs> I guess, present things to, to clients. And then next we'll, yeah, look at the, the search behavior um, within South Africa. So I think a lot of people tend to forget that um, South Africa is incredibly diverse in, in terms of our population. And um, not only is there a lot of diversity, but there's also a lot of um, yeah, differences and disparity between um, how much disposable income you know, the, the population has. So there's, um, that of course has a massive impact on, on um, the way that people search. Um, and it's also interesting to note that people, the, the population is, is diverse in terms of geography, but also um, uh, culture as well. So it's um, it's a very sort of tough um, market to to be presented with um, when you first kind of look at it, because there's there's really you know we have a lot of different cultures, a lot of different languages, a lot of yeah. W w we'll get to that just now, but really um, 
yeah, there's a lot to to unpack when it comes to to mm. our um, yeah diverse population. Yeah, I guess like people from say Ireland or the UK often forget that you know you can't just go out with one campaign geared to the whole population. That you know everybody has their different cultures, everyone has their different languages. So you really need to like decide what area you're doing, who your demographics are, who your buyer personas are, and then tailor it around them rather than just doing one big thing at everybody. Yeah, exactly. It's um yeah, and 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 the the population is so you know different in terms of in terms of culture. So you know just the types of things that people will be searching for are, are you know totally totally different. So you really have to kind of look at each demographic as its own you know um, almost country in a way. You 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 would not target one I guess culture or language uh, in the same way that you would do to to another one. So it's um, yeah, definitely something that a lot of people tend to um, forget and especially in South Africa you'll hear me mention a lot about our 11 languages that we have 11 official languages but um, mm. a lot of people you know the, the multilingual SEO is actually not a, not really a thing in South Africa um, and you would expect a country with 11 official languages to have uh, yeah they're, they're sort of multilingual SEO um, sorted but it's um, yeah it, it's not really <clears throat> that common that you'll find, <clears throat> excuse me, translation tool even for for that matter, um, let alone subfolders. Um, so it's uh, very interesting um, in terms of yeah, to, in in terms of that. Yeah. So essentially, within our diverse um, population, um, and and especially within the last couple of years, there's definitely been a a large shift towards um, yeah online shopping and, and e-commerce. Um, but what's interesting to note about you know, online shopping is that South Africans are not very likely to to trust sort of just any random um, e-commerce website that they find. What we have in, in South Africa is um, a platform called takealot.com, which is basically like a um, Amazon, um, but it, it, it's kind of South Africa's version of that. Um, and people tend to, to go there directly. And it, it kind of uh, provides a unique opportunity actually for um, for businesses to to really come in and um, ramp up their SEO, uh, their e-commerce SEO, but also you know find a way to to build trust with within um, yeah the, the various um, groups of our population essentially. The biggest point I think um, when it comes to to search behavior is is definitely that um, South Africa access the internet basically through their mobile devices, um, which which means that mobile optimization you know is Obviously, we know as SEOs that it's it's um, you know we have the the mobile first, but I would say when it comes to South Africa, it's it's really really essential to make sure that yeah your mobile optimization is um, yeah on, on point basically because um, yeah we have some stats down at the bottom here, but the whole population has a smartphone nowadays, and um, yeah only 96 percent of the population. Uh, well, not only, but I mean, 96% of the population uses uh, the internet primarily um, via their mobile device. So it's um, yeah, definitely something that I think is worth prioritizing. You know, if if um, you want to create any SEO strategy in South Africa, of course, um, you know, I would recommend mobile optimization anywhere in the world, of course. But in South Africa, it's it's uh, particularly important. But when it comes to the way in which people search in South Africa, um, you will see these three points here, comparison, shopping, trust and reviews and social media. So what South Africans tend to do is um, we really like our comparison, you know, shopping. And we also like um, reading through a lot of reviews. I think that's the way in which we we really, you know, build trust with, with um, you know, certain companies that, that we find on um, online or on social media. So... Uh, we really like to to compare articles like um, you know versus or um, you know this product A versus product B, and um, even just getting sort of one of the clients I worked with, we got um, some influencers uh, who had um, sort of relevant blogs in in the health space, create reviews, um, you know obviously honest reviews, but with that way we were able to build um, a lot of trust with. Yeah, people searching for for that particular product, and um, it made a huge difference in terms of of sales. Um, so, you know, ranking number one doesn't necessarily guarantee that um, you know you're going to convert in South Africa. It comes, it, there's a lot more involved when it comes to to selling a product. Um, 
people like to do a lot of research and um, that may be the case um, in other countries as well but specifically um, yeah in South Africa I would I would definitely recommend companies um, you know when outlining their <clears throat> content strategy to to maybe if it makes sense of course to um, you know do some comparative um, reviews or um, try and build as much trust as, as possible it's ob obviously easier said than done um, because you know, the EAT, if we could all just uh, click our fingers and magically, um, <laughs> you know, have our uh, trust and authority, um, yeah, sort of uh, improved or increased, that would be great. But um, yeah, a lot has to go into it to to um, make sure that the, the trust is, is built. Sounds like it's a lot more work to kind of build up that trust compared to other markets where it's just like, oh, yeah, we'll buy it, doesn't matter. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, South Africans tend to be, and, and of course, I'm, I'm using a lot of um, generalizations, but, uh, you know, on the whole, we, we do like to um, be quite careful when it comes to, mm -hmm. to buying. Um, we quite, what's the word? Uh, skeptical. Yeah, if I could put it that way. Um, and just, uh, you know, just sort of the way that the country um, mm -hmm. has developed over time, we um, we kind of always uh, looking out for a scam here and there. So, yeah, there is a lot of work involved when it comes to um, yeah, building trust. Keeps people busy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So we now we move on to um, yeah, the, the multilingual um, aspect. And, and we've kind of touched on this um, already. But yeah, we know now South Africa has yeah, 11 official languages. So it, yeah, it becomes really important to be able to consider um, the different languages, but then also um, different regions, you know, within South Africa. So, um, you know, English is, I would say, when it comes to advertising, um, generally speaking, you know, is the um, dominant language. But there's um, so many different languages in South Africa, and um, you know, what's what's spoken upcountry um, is not spoken, for example, you know, in in, in the south. So, it, um, or in the Western Cape, for example, we will have a, a certain um, African language called Kosa. And then upcountry will have uh, Zulu and and Sutu and um, yeah, totally different languages. And of course, those languages are kind of based in a specific region. So you know that's something else to to consider as well. Is not necessarily just targeting um, a language because yeah, what works in in one province isn't going to necessarily work in another province. So it's um yeah, definitely something something to consider. Yeah, and then sort of moving on from that. For a, a company in South Africa to um, you know, really get uh, the most out of their SEO campaign or their SEO strategy, um, it really would do wonders to um, create content that yeah, appeals to, to different um, audiences instead of just in English. I think um, you know, having a website only in English um, has the potential to, to isolate certain um, yeah, groups and, and certain cultures. kind of feels like it's sort of generated in, in a way that um, is for a specific audience, which is the English audience. Um, you know, so you really don't want to isolate, you know, certain parts of the population. Yeah, so definitely multilingual content is um, super, super important. And uh, again, it's it's an area where you don't really see that much sites are, are in um, in English. And even, you know, I mentioned we have our sort of version of uh, Amazon, which is, is takealot.com. And even that, at least last time I checked, it, it, you know, there's no um, language option or anything. It's all in English. So, you know, if, if, even if, if large sort of companies like that are not integrating language into their strategies, it, it really provides an opportunity for um, those to come in and kind of um, exploit that, that untapped area, you know, really provide content that is targeted and, um, yeah, really specific to a certain culture or a specific language or a specific region. Um, all, all of those have got, um, yeah, th their own sort of um, implications. That's a really, really good point, because I think I sent it to you before, um, that Ryanair recently got in trouble for kind of assuming everybody in South Africa spoke Afrikaans. Yes, and indeed. <laughs> that yeah, was a big story. Exactly. So I think it kind of just goes to show that you really need to kind of look into kind of what languages are spoken where and the cultural aspects of it. Because yeah. if you assume things like that, you can offend a lot of people. Most certainly. And mm. um, yeah, so we'll actually get to a, to a slide just now where, mm. you know, I'll, I'll provide an example of, you know, of that happening in South Africa. But um, it's um, really, yeah, it, it, it was just an example of a, a big corporation entering the market and, and just having absolutely no 
um, idea of the impact that the the advertising campaign mm-hmm. yeah would have. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, and then you know moving on to um, keyword research, of course. You know, if you're going to be targeting certain languages and, and certain cultures, then, um, you know, keyword research, we really have to look at that and look at the way in which um, people within those specific areas and, and people who speak those specific languages, you know, how are they searching? You know, what keywords are they searching? It's, it, you know, with, within different provinces in South Africa, we have even our own slang words. And, um, you know, so, so things that people might be searching for in Johannesburg, might be totally different to what they'll be searching for in um, in Cape Town. So I think the keyword research is um, definitely an area, of course, ties into um, the multilingual SEO in general. But yeah, really, you know, not just translating keywords that you find in English is, is just not going to not going to cut it. Uh, you know, it, it just isn't. And, you know, Afrikaans, for example, is, is um, it also has a lot of um, you know words that when translated from from English just it's just not the, the word that they would use so uh, really something to um, to consider and I think I'm um, looking at you know local local SEO kind of ties into again what we've been talking about but um, yeah th- there's definitely a lot of opportunity I think in South Africa for um, local SEO I think you know that's where biggest potential is I think small businesses, their online presence, it could be a lot better and um, especially their SEO. Um, so, you know, of course, just things like um, local keywords, as we were talking about now, what might be searched for in Johannesburg just won't be searched for in, in Cape Town. So, yeah, local keywords and um, yeah, and of course, all the stuff that comes with it, like um, yeah, optimizing your Google My Business and, um, you know, having your your site on um, local directories that really makes a big difference um, in South Africa and um, a previous client of mine we we were able to simply create local site local citations essentially so um, you know just have a few profiles on the various um, uh, business directories in South Africa and and just with that um, alone we were able to outrank our competition so um, you know really small things um, can make a massive difference in in a you know in a space where SEO is not really um, considered a lot a lot of the time. I think it's it, of course it's it's um, gaining a lot of popularity as as it has I guess in the last uh, 10 15 years all over the world. But um, as you know in, in South Africa we with certain things we um, we tend to take things on quite quite late and then other things um, will you know take them on um, immediately. So just an example, you know, not really relating much to SEO, but for example, um, before I moved to Europe, um, you know, tapping with your card or, um, you know, with your phone was totally normal. And then, you know, I went to Germany and that's not a thing at all. You know, it's still cash based. And, you know, to think a third world country like South Africa took on that technology five years ago, essentially, and and then going to a first world country like Germany, and experiencing that was was quite um, quite shocking, but yeah. So in in some ways we we take things on uh, quickly, and then in others, um, yeah, we we tend to lag behind a little bit. So I think SEO is one of those areas where we we're just not quite there, like like a lot of businesses are in in the states and in the UK and um, yeah and in Europe as well. So definitely something to um, to consider. At least it means there's more potential, though. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, you know I remember. <laughs> when I was still in South Africa, almost being um, overwhelmed by the amount of potential because it's like you, you don't really, you have so many ideas and you know that such small changes are going to make such a big difference. Mm. But, uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, so there's only so much you can kind of do. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I think we touched on this as well. And I think you'll you'll start to notice that a lot of these points do tie into each other. But the colloquial language in South Africa, you know, as I mentioned, we have such a, a crazy um, variety of words from all these different cultures and all these different languages that that al- almost get meshed into each other. So, um, you know, of course, you know, I come from an English background, but I use a lot of Afrikaans words, you know, as as slang and, and even Kosa words, for example. So um, it's it's very important for um, yeah businesses to really be able to consider that. Um, and, and again, you know, when we're looking at translating um, words from English, um, e- even simple things um, that we say in English. So, for example, if someone's looking for um, sneakers or trainers 
in South Africa, we don't call them that. We call them tackies. Or, you know, for example, you, you have um, traffic lights, but in South Africa, we call them robots. Yeah, just as an example. And um, it's, uh, yeah, we, we call barbecues bries and we call um, soft drinks, we call them cool drinks. So it's, it's small things like that, even in English, that, you know, we wouldn't necessarily search for those words in English. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, definitely something to consider the, you know these these sort of colloquial words or, or these um slang words really become entrenched in our in our culture but not just um a specific culture but just you know south africans as a whole so um you know things aren't all, also it kind of complicated in a way because it's not always as black and white as you might um, think you know you target one language but they also might integrate a few other languages within their language so um it, it can get a bit complicated I'm definitely going to use the sneaker example one because I know that in all other things I always show the difference between like runners in Ireland and then trainers in the UK in the and UK, it's just uh, like yeah. so many different names for them everywhere and you guys have a different name for them now so it's just yeah exactly exactly <laughs> it's um yes yeah, it's, it's really just small things like that that I wouldn't know if if I didn't speak to you that runners were a, a thing in um in Ireland so you would never consider that um so it, it's no, very I, I, I wouldn't call them tackies ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wouldn't expect anyone outside of the, <clears throat> the country to. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Another one that I <clears throat> always like to um, bring up, and um, some people think I'm crazy to bring this one up, but this one really sticks with me. And excuse the pun, but in the in the UK, I think you have that blue tack where, like, you know, you can yeah, stick. Yeah, blue tack, yeah. <laughs> so in South Africa, it's called we call it press stick, you know, because it basically, you know, you press and stick it. It, it says what it does. And to me, that's the, the greatest word. <laughs> but, you know, no one's going to be searching for blue tack. Yeah. You never know. Oh, random question. What do you call a pencil sharpener? Is it a pencil sharpener or do you have another word for it? Uh, I think we just call it a sharpener or a pencil sharpener. Uh, yeah, we don't have another word. Why? Is there another uh, one? In Ireland, it's a pencil pairer. Oh wow! Yeah, like you like a paring knife. Something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you pair the pencil. <laughs> I yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, "Oh my god, that's so wrong." <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's uh, it's different. Yeah, I like it. And then, yeah, finally, um, you know, when it comes to English language, um, you know, we we follow the British way of spelling. So, um, you know, color and um, uh, you know, we'll follow that kind of. Um, spelling but um I, you know i wouldn't i wouldn't put too much emphasis on on um you know spelling in when it comes to entering south africa because I, maybe i take that back but i think nowadays google is is definitely able to understand you know if you leave out the u that it's it's you know you're kind of searching for the same thing but um what i would say is that if you are going to enter the south african market um, i think if you don't use the british way of spelling you do have a um a tendency to isolate yourself in a way it, it kind of becomes obvious when you you know when you're spelling in american um, english that that kind of content is um geared towards the american people i guess so it's uh you, you do want to um from a you know user perspective um, and a trust perspective i think to you, you you do want to have the spelling the way that we would spell it in south africa but i don't think in terms of rankings it's going to make much of a difference and maybe i'm being um naive when it comes to that I, you know I'm not, I'm not too sure but um i i never considered the um, american language obviously because I come from south africa so color or all of those words mm -hmm. uh, flavor and, and whatnot i will spell it the english way so knowing that it I, it never occurred to me but i would say if you're a you know multinational corporation or or, or an, in, an international business uh, entering the country um definitely something to to um take seriously i think that's a good point as well like even the little things like the z's and the u's and whatever can make a big difference <laughs> yeah yeah indeed and um yeah you know also we, we do tend to say, uh, follow the same kind of um or we use the same words a, a lot of the time so um you know we'll say the car boot or the the bonnet for example and um a lot of british stuff you know is is a uh, sort of uh lingered on in, in in south africa so um we we keep a lot of um and, and we use a lot of the same the same words but um yeah definitely american english 
kind of does stick out yeah like kind of like a sore thumb in a way it, it, mm. it um yeah yeah and so next we move on to um yeah sort of the considerations that um you know com- companies need to be aware of when formulating their SEO strategy in South Africa or even just sort of entering the market um in general so we have a lot of compliance we have a lot of acts which protect certain um people certain you know groups just a lot of different things so for example you know we have the consumer protection act which is you know and these are fairly recent um, acts that have been um, implemented in south africa within the last 10 15 years i would say um yeah so you know the consumer protection act is something that you know as as the name suggests protects the consumer so um you know we we kind of feel like we have the backing of um I guess the law on our side in a way, um, and 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 again, that's kind of why um, as South Africans, you know, we we tend to be quite wary, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so, I think these these acts were set up to um, just make uh, business, you know, and especially online, um, more, a safer a safer space for for South Africans. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people. Are quite scared for example to to pay with their credit card or to pay with the debit card online despite all the you know data protection and security that we that we have in place so you know that's that's definitely something to consider um you know highlighting that um you know your your data is, is safe if you visit a specific site or or you know highlighting that um this transaction is totally safe you know those things really do matter um in south africa and um yeah, we, you know, the Protection of Personal Information Act is, is something that um, has recently come come about and um, that has had quite a large impact on the, the digital la- uh, landscape within the country because, you know, now there's a lot of regulation in terms of, you know, what information you can share and what information you are allowed to take from, from other people, which um, should be the case um, everywhere, I guess. But, you know, some countries have got lesser laws than others. You know, I'm not too sure exactly how it is set up um, elsewhere, but I know for um, specifically South Africa, um, it's it's definitely uh, something to consider. Yeah, you know, we also have the Advertising Association in South Africa. Uh, it doesn't necessarily tie into um, to SEO, but you know, because SEO is a form of um, advertising, it's it's definitely recommended that you know foreign companies or even local businesses and companies. Um, are aware of these these different um, standards, these different acts, and um, yeah, these these different laws, because you, you know you can get into a lot of trouble. Of course, you know, ignoring them, and then you know, false advertising is is another one that we um, specifically South Africans tend to be quite um, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, we're quite skeptical and quite weary. So um, it, it's imperative that there there is no um, you know false false advertising. It, it's quite easy I think to do SEO and 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 start ranking for something um, and be able to present a particular product in a way that you know might be totally mis, um, misleading um, and that can have legal consequences as well so I think um, yeah being you know, even if you are a I guess a review site of some kind um, you know it, it's really important that um, products and and services for that matter are yeah as, as fairly represented as possible and then I, I, yeah, these last two cultural sensitivity and and discrimination, uh, they kind of tie tie into each other in a way. But again, because we have such a diverse population and because we have such a um, unique and sensitive past with um, apartheid in South Africa and um, you know discrimination, so it, it's very important that you know these kind of things are are avoided in you know no discrimination against. You know, based on color, based on sex, based on religion, based on any 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 kind of thing like that. And you know, the example that I want to do to share is um, so I think maybe about four or five years ago, H and M ran a um, an advertising campaign uh, in South Africa. And what landed up happening was um, something that seemed totally innocent um, was interpreted very very badly, and it had big repercussions for for H&M so um, we had an advertising campaign for uh, clothes for kids um, and then there was a um, I think there was an advert of a a black kid and he had um, you know H&M clothes on but then I think the caption was like um, you know dress 
dress your little monkey in um, cool colors or something along those lines. And, um, you know, while that might be wow. innocent, uh, you know, somewhere uh, uh, in another country in South Africa that really is offensive and, and really, um, you know, th there was no uh, cultural sensitivity, if I can put it that way. And, you know, how that managed to slip through the cracks, I'm still not sure. But, you know, those kind of things, it, it's, it's really, really um, important that these little nuances don't get interpreted, um, yeah, you know, in, in the wrong way. So you kind of want to, you know, protect yourself from uh, from ever having those those issues. Yeah, that you know, that is that is pretty bad. It's um, it. I, I think what even landed up happening was um, protesters went to one of the stores, um, you know, one of the bigger stores in one of the malls, um, actually all over the country, I think, and they you know started looting the the um, the shop and, and kind of destroying it because of this insensitive uh, advertising, mm -hmm. which, you know, maybe to the, the marketing team, totally innocent, but, um, you know, they obviously failed to um, you know, be aware of these these little yeah, nuances that we have within South Africa. So, um, yeah, definitely very, very important. And now we can look at the, um, yeah, the, the buying culture um, in South Africa. We have... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have quite a large um, disparity between, you know, certain groups, I guess, and, and certain um, cultures, again, based on, on um, yeah, our, our, um, our past, essentially. So, um, but one thing to note is that we have a really high um, unemployment rate and, and, you know, quite a lot of um, poverty within South Africa. So, um, that, again, that's kind of why, you know, we like to do comparison shopping. We, we, we really like to get the best deal, I suppose. Um, so, um, yeah, South Africans are very price sensitive. So, um, yeah, taking taking that into account, um, yeah, is super, super important. And, um, you know, culture can play a massive, massive role and does play a massive role in the way that, um, you know, people people search for, for um, certain products and services. Yeah, we're just such a diverse country with so many cultural backgrounds that, um, yeah, it's, can, I think it can be quite um, daunting to be able to uh, tend to all of these different, um, you know, groups within a certain country. But um, you know, definitely something that that yeah, that shouldn't be ignored. And then yeah, you know, tradition and heritage. Um, yeah, of course we have a, a really rich um, cultural heritage. So um, certain groups within South Africa will place greater emphasis on their tradition, on their heritage, also on their culture. Um, so the way in which companies, um, yeah, consider setting up their SEO campaigns or their even their advertising campaigns, um, sort of considering tradition and, and heritage is is something that, um, yeah, I think can make a you know a massive difference. So, um, for example, a company that might sell traditional African clothing, um, you know, they should consider advertising or showcasing their product in a way that um, you know highlights the cultural. I guess significance of uh, that particular item, and um, you know what is the tradition behind that. Um, it's not necessarily just as easy as having a product on, uh, you know, you know, in your face, and and that's going to do it. It's um, yeah. Th there's a lot more aspects that companies and and SEOs in general can sort of target that you know that hits those those sort of nerves, uh, and and that um, can kind of help make people feel, you know, safe buying that specific product. And again, I think that also ties into into building trust and and into um yeah, you know, gaining the the support of the South African population. So um it's uh yeah, definitely something to consider. That's a really good point as well. So I, I wanted to move on to just a, you know, a few yeah, SEO tips, you know, within South Africa and, and you'll see some here that um you know, might not necessarily be specific to South Africa. Um, they'll be specific uh, or they'll be, you'll find them kind of in, in, in any SEO strategy. But um, so I guess the way that I would put it is, you know, the fundamentals of SEO aren't, aren't going to change much, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, technical SEO, building backlinks, you know, stuff like that is um, is going to be standard no matter where you are in the world. But there's definitely important considerations um, that, SEOs can be aware of to to sort of um, make it easier, make their life easier, and and also just improve the success of their their campaigns within South Africa. Yeah, so so I think the the first one which um, touched on earlier is is mobile optimization, and um, you know we look at that as being kind of a standard now within the SEO um, 
world. But you know, as we we saw earlier, you know, 99% of South Africans basically have access to a smartphone. So, um, and it's the primary way in which people search in South Africa. So, um, mobile optimization is um, really, really important. And um, you know, when you consider the the large amount of of people that live in informal settlements and you know in in rural areas in South Africa, a lot of those groups don't necessarily have access to um, computers. They don't have access um, to laptops and 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 stuff like that. So, uh, but what they do have is is a smartphone. So um, it's um, really really uh, yeah, can't stress enough the optimizing for for mobile how important that is in in South Africa and optimizing again for you know for local search i think we touched on that in one of the previous slides but yeah so that you know there's there's certain keywords that might be used in a specific region which has a specific culture which speaks a specific language so um you know if you are in a area within south africa that has a, a dominant language has a dominant culture it would definitely do you a lot of good as an seo to optimize for that um yeah you know local search um and 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 specifically the the slang or the colloquial terms that um people might be using in those in those certain areas um which yeah kind of ties into the next point of course you know we want to target specific languages so if you know if we are a small business located in um you know a an area in south africa where there's predominantly um zulu speakers you know then we'll we will want to target you know that specific language but within that area there might be a lot of zulu speakers but it's um, generally up in a certain province in south africa where there will also be as many languages as um as you feel necessary in terms of um you know who, who is the demographic or what is the demographic that is is um visiting your site but also the demographic that you are specifically targeting so um yeah making sure that you don't you know isolate yourself um, just by targeting yeah one specific language and um, yeah again con considering you know cultural nuances we saw in the the previous slide with the example of h and m um, you really have to um, yeah consider you know these really seemingly small nuances but that can have a massive massive impact and can can almost make or break um, once a, a company or a business or or even an individual for that matter is seen as bad or seen as negative in the eyes of of the country it's very very hard to um to sort of come back from that so it's you know doing the groundwork in the beginning to make sure that you know you aren't offending certain cultures you aren't offending certain groups of people um yeah super super important a lot easier to do that in in the run-up isn't it than try and fix it afterwards yeah it's uh, definitely definitely not and it's you know it's also I can imagine being super, super hard to to be able to consider every single cultural nuance, and um, it's almost impossible because it's again such a diverse population. But I think being able to to just sort of even if a an SEO outside of South Africa who is targeting South Africa, you know, just speaking to a South African or running something by them make can make a big difference. Um, you know, just to make sure that you don't don't really offend anyone. Um, I'm, I'm by no means saying, you know, spend months, uh, you know, noting every single cultural difference and nuance and, 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 and stuff like that. But I think, yeah, it think just makes sense. Even just, having, just having one conversation can be the difference between like something blowing up in your face and then somebody saying, you know, don't do that. Why don't you do it like this instead? Yeah, exactly. It's it really it, yeah, it can have a massive, massive impact, just something so small. So, um, yeah, I would de definitely recommend that. And then the yeah the, the last two points you know the the socio-economic makeup of south africa um and then also you know the political climate um yeah i, I don't want to say um you know tension or anything but it's um you know there, there, there's certain what's the word challenges i suppose that um south africans face when it comes to socio-economic standards and um you know also the the political climate so um we have quite a a weak currency when it um you know when compared to the dollar or the pound um the euro you know so companies should definitely be aware of um you know how how these kind of things um you know can can impact their business but also their strategies um it's quite a, a volatile yeah economic uh climate essentially so um 
Loran can can drop very very quickly, um, or it can can gain very very quickly within within a couple of days. So it's um, yeah definitely you know having keeping a pulse I suppose on the the economic situation within South Africa, but also the political situation because um, politics of course is is everywhere, but it's tied in uh, you know a lot to our yeah economy and um, as I, I suppose it is everywhere. But um, yeah. You know, ignoring these these aspects um, can have, I guess, detrimental consequences. So it's it's worth being aware of them. And then, yeah, my my final final slide is is sort of uh, you know about microlocalization, but it in a way um, summarizes a lot of what we we've spoken about yeah in, in the previous slides. So you know, just translating from English is is, is not going to be enough. You know, we already saw that um, you know we we use even English speakers in South Africa use different um, so, uh, certain terms or, or words. So um, yeah, it, it's definitely um, worth being knowing that that that, that is um, something to uh, avoid, really. And then yeah, you know we saw how how different languages are, are tied to to certain cultures, um, but they also tied to to certain regions within South Africa. So works for for the English market is not going to necessarily work for the Afrikaans market, which isn't going to necessarily work for the Zulu market. So you really, yeah, you really have to um, understand that each each culture, each language, each region has their own considerations or has their own little nuances that are worth considering, should I say? Yeah, and then um, I think quite a, I seem to have uh, repeated myself quite a lot uh, on this last slide, but I guess just summing summing it all up, you know, culture. Again, something very important that needs to be considered within an SEO strategy, and then just um, you know being aware of the various dialects, colloquial uh, languages or colloquial terms, should I should I say? And then again, you know, being being aware of the economic climate, the political climate, and and um, just sort of the way in which you know South Africans are socially. Um, and and how the different regions tie into each other, the different cultures tie into each other. Yeah, I, w- I would say if you're entering South Africa and you don't know anything, it I would uh, do my due diligence, put it that way, you know, really just understand that it's not one size fits all, but um, many sizes fit many different people. So uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, something to um, take quite seriously. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, yeah, really, again, had a lot of uh, fun putting this together and um, great being able to uh, share some insights to a country that um, not very uh, well known, I guess, around the world. But I think we're starting to make a little bit of an impact.